The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it has found a leak in a tank that stores water contaminated with radioactive substances. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company say they confirmed the leak shortly after noon on Wednesday. The tank is used to store water from a reservoir where leaks were discovered in April. It's one of about a thousand tanks used to hold contaminated water. TEPCO officials say water is dripping from a joint every three to four seconds. They say they're investigating the leak. They say so far there has been no rise in radiation levels at the plant. The Japanese government has released its annual report on the health of the nation's environment. It says the impact of the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident remains serious and that concerns about decontamination and radiation exposure should be addressed immediately. This year's report was approved at a cabinet meeting on Tuesday. It prioritizes reconstruction from the March 11th quake and tsunami and the nuclear accident they triggered. The report says a large amounts of radioactive substances remain in the environment more than two years after the accident. It calls decontamination of the affected areas a pressing issue and it admits that government efforts have so far failed to dispel fears over possible low dosage exposure. The report stopped short of discussing nuclear power generation as a way to tackle global warming. Before the 2011 accident, the government used the report to promote the use of nuclear energy. We hope more people will consider how to hand over a truly prosperous society to future generations. The report also says values appear to be changing in Japan since the disaster and that the country should shift away from assessing wealth only through GDP figures. Japanese atomic bomb survivors are angry at the government over its stance on nuclear weapons. They say leaders need to do more to abolish the arms. 120 delegates of a survivors group gathered in Tokyo for a general meeting. They include victims of the 1945 bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They adopted a resolution calling on Japan as the only country to have suffered an atomic bombing to do its best to eliminate nuclear weapons. In April, 80 countries met in Switzerland at a gathering of signatories to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. They endorsed a statement opposing the use of nuclear weapons under any circumstances. But the Japanese delegates refused to sign. They said it could cause problems with a security alliance with the U.S. They said opposing nuclear weapons could undermine the American nuclear umbrella that includes Japan. The survivors agreed to increase pressure on the government to change its stance ahead of the 70th anniversary of the bombings in 2015. International Atomic Energy Agency officials are raising their voices against Iran's leaders and their nuclear program. IAEA board members from six countries, including the U.S. and Russia, are urging Iran's leaders to agree to U.N. inspections. They say this will help clear up any suspicion about Iran's nuclear ambitions. Iranian leaders have been denying IAEA inspectors access to its Parchin military facility. U.N. officials believe the base is involved in the country's nuclear weapons program. Other IAEA members, including Japan, are concerned about Iran's upgraded uranium enrichment capabilities. Iran's ambassador to the IAEA, Ali Ashka Soltanie, responded to the international criticism. The great nation of Iran will not permit anybody to deprive its present and future generation from any liberal right of peaceful use of nuclear energy. He said his country will proceed with its nuclear program, including the enrichment of uranium. With the IAEA's primary objective being promotion of nuclear power around the world, is it not a conflict of interest to have them also be responsible for measuring the levels of radioactivity after the accident at Fukushima Daiichi? The IAEA um, does two things. Um, the, the first is uh, weapons proliferation. Um, you know, they go into countries where 
um, uh, people have promised not to make bombs to make sure that they are abiding by that promise. 95% of the uh, people who work for IAEA are involved in weapons proliferation. Only 5% are involved in nuclear power. The IAEA's charter, charter number two, second item on the list, is to promote nuclear power. So while different media groups call it the, the, the UN watchdog, uh, in fact, they're the UN lapdog, and they um, are, are knowingly chartered by uh, the agencies that, that, that fund the UN and the companies behind them to promote nuclear power, not to protect the public. So I think when you, when you hear of an IAEA report out there, you've got to go back to that very fundamental foundation piece that these guys are promoters and they're not regulators. Does that prioritizing of promotion end up having a negative impact on the public? Uh, I didn't think. No. Well, first off, you know, the country was devastated by a, a, a tsunami that, uh, that killed 22,000 people. Um, you know, we have our 9-11 in the United States that killed 3,000 people. And, and they say we have got our 3-11, uh, which killed, uh, you know, seven times more than, uh, uh, than, than yours. So that alone is psychologically devastating to a country. Then on top of that, the next day a nuclear plant blew up, and the next day another nuclear plant blew up, and the next day another nuclear plant blew up. Um, the, uh, the, the trauma from the earthquake is compounded by the fact that now 160,000 people can't get back to their homes, not because they're destroyed in the tsunami, but because there's so much radiation that they're not allowed back home yet. You know, think about it. You, we're now 26 months out. And, uh, and people cannot go back to the home they used to live in. Um, it's, it's devastating emotionally to the families. You know, on top of that, while they were home, because the Japanese didn't evacuate soon enough, um, you know, they, they were exposed to high levels of radiation, and they have to live with the question, you know, am I going to get a cancer in five or ten years? It has to be gnawing at them. Are we not already seeing reports of cysts on the thyroid glands of children throughout the prefecture of Fukushima as well as the rest of Japan? Children already had um, thyroid cancer removed, um, so and seven more suspected of having uh, thyroid cancer just uh, among 38,000 children. So you know they are testing more and more children, but the first uh, uh, study on, you know, already showed that the three confirmed cancer. So that's quite alarming. But then uh, what's more concerning is the fact that the, um, even today, you know, I just heard on the radio that the UN officially concluded that the, um, the cancer derived from Fukushima Daiichi accident will not be increased. I mean, the, there, will be, there won't be increased cancer in Japan because of the accident. That was today's report. And I think that really... Um, compounds the, the problem, and, and especially psychologically da da uh, damaging to people living in the area because they know people are getting sick. They know they're sick. They know people are dying, and yet the world has written them off in a sense that you know, if, it, if they get sick, well, don't blame the accident. It's your fault. And that's, that's what bothers me the most.